Thank you for choosing the 2521 series MixCal thermostatic mixing valve for solar applications. This quick installation tip video is meant to give you a general overview of what you need to know to get started with the installation of your mixing valve. One of the first things that you should notice when you open the box of your mixing valve is a nice set of installation instructions. Be sure to read them because they do include everything that you need to know. So after you've read the instructions, you'll find the rest of the components that are inside the box. That includes the mixing valve body itself, uh, as well as your tail pieces with your union nuts, your set of check valves with the O-rings, the stainless steel screens that hold the check valves in place, and your three sealing washers that go between the body and the tail pieces. Again, on the models that include the temperature gauge on the mixed outlet, you will have that as well. The 2521 series is made of low lead brass and is designed to be used in solar thermal applications that are producing domestic hot water. It has a high temperature rating of 212 degrees Fahrenheit and can continuously function at high temperatures found in a solar thermal application. This unit is a point of distribution mixing valve and complies with the ASSE 1017 standard. It is available in half, three quarter, and one inch sweat connections and includes a set of check valves for the hot inlet and cold inlet. You also have the option of a mixed outlet temperature gauge as well. Before you install a mixing valve into your system, be sure that the, the piping and system is clear of any debris that could foul up the mixing valve. This mixing valve also has no rules when it comes to orientation, so that means that it can be installed in the position where the knob is upright, on its side, or upside down. When you're ready to install the mixing valve, I would recommend putting the tail pieces with the union nuts onto the mixing valve without the check valves in place or the sealing washers. This allows you to get the measurements for where you need to cut your piping to the appropriate length. Then once you've cut your piping, you can remove the tail pieces again and sweat all the tail pieces in place. After you've completed the sweating of the tail pieces, at that point then you can install your check valves and your sealing washers. When you go to install the check valves, you remember you're gonna have one on the hot inlet and one on the cold inlet of the mixing valve assembly. Inside the box, you're gonna have your check valves and you're gonna have an O-ring for each check valve. That O-ring is gonna slide right over the brass end of the check valve assembly. And then on the hot and cold inlet, you're gonna be able to just push that guy right in place. Uh, again, I want to reiterate that you want to make sure that the tail pieces have had a chance to cool down after you've soldered them and you don't want to put them in there while it's hot because you will melt the check valves. So after you've got the check valve in, you can install the stainless steel screen. This screen is really meant to hold the check valve in place while it's inside the tail piece and then you can install your sealing washer in there. From there, you can go ahead and install the tail piece or install the mixing valve body onto the tail piece and tighten it down with a wrench and you're all set. So now that you've got the mixing valve assembled onto the hot and cold inlet tail pieces, you're gonna connect the mixed outlet tail piece. Again, you're gonna have a sealing washer in there for that mixed outlet tail piece and then you're just gonna thread it right on to the bottom of the mixing valve. This particular tail piece has a special fitting that allows you to install a temperature gauge into the mixed outlet. So now that you've got your mixing valve installed and all the union nuts tightened down with a wrench, you're going to want to put the system into operation. You're going to open your hot and cold inlets to the mixing valve or turn the water onto the whole facility in general. At that point, you can open up one of your hot fixtures out in your system somewhere and on the top of the mixing valve, you're going to have a yellow knob and that's going to be how you adjust your temperature. On the knob itself, there is a uh, scale on there that goes from minimum through maximum. And that minimum through maximum scale corresponds to roughly about 80 to 150 degrees. And in the case of domestic hot water, we would recommend that you go no higher than 120 degrees Fahrenheit to reduce the risk of scalding. So you've got your mixed outlet temperature set now and you've checked it with a thermometer at your fixtures. A useful feature of the mixing valve here is that you can actually lock the cap in place to prevent tinkering by a curious homeowner or a child. At this point, if you wanted to do that, you can remove a screw that's in the very top of the knob. It's just a small Phillips head screw and you can remove it. At this point, the knob actually slides directly up off of the mixing valve assembly Inside here, you'll notice a nice slot in the plastic and that allows you to actually slide it right over this index point and that allows you to lock the knob in place so it cannot be turned anymore. When you do that, 
you just put the screw back in on the top that you took out previously and you're all set. I hope you found these tips useful. If you have any further questions, be sure to contact your wholesaler, your rep, or us directly. And thanks for watching.